and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal Ann Compton, and I am so excited to be with you today. I am about to introduce you to a wonderful, wonderful woman named Alexis Mathis. Alexis is a psychic medium and a channel and a font of good energy and information and knowledge. Alexis is going to take us on a journey of her spiritual awakening and how it is that she turned on all of the little psychic lights in her house, how she had encounters with aliens and spirits, how she met her ancestors and what her ancestors came to tell her. We also talk about artificial intelligence, transhumanism. We talk about her autistic child and how autistic children, so many of them are actually coming into the world to grid this world and raise the vibration. When I tell you our conversation goes in many different directions, but you're just going, you're going to love Alexis as much as I do. Just a fascinating in-depth conversation that I know you will love. Before we get into it, I would like to invite you to please like and comment and definitely subscribe. Everything you do helps me to grow, helps this community to grow. And I would just really, really appreciate it. All right. Okay. Without further ado, let's get into today's conscious conversation with the beautiful and amazing Alexis Mathis. I would like to welcome to the Life Magnetics podcast, Alexis Mathis. Alexis Mathis is a psychic medium. She's intuitive. She's a highly sensitive person. <laughs> And she is a channel and she is most famously known around the world as the cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs turn up queen. Alexis Mathis, welcome to the pod. Thank you so much, <laughs> Crystal. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, world. Well, we're doing this on audio. We're also doing this on video. It's going to be up on YouTube. So I'm just so happy to introduce you to my audience. Um, I, my first encounter, just full disclosure, with Alexis, I think was in the intuitive development circle, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, we would have a circle, was it twice monthly? I forget, something like twice monthly. <laughs> but every time I would be in charge of one of those circles and you would be there, I would just see this like light, this light in you. And then you began to start feeling a little more bold with your readings. And then as you became more bold with your readings, I was like leaning in going, whoa, she's really good. Like, and, and the things that you were bringing forth and then like the readings that you were giving started to shift and change and almost felt more like, um, exhortation, which is, um, messages coming through. And this must, this is your channeling ability. You know, in the Bible, they call that exhortation, like the spirit, the inspiration, the motivation, here comes the message. And it's just been, what I'm saying is it's been so cool to see, like the spectrum of your growth and how as you're shifting and changing like all of these little lights are coming on in your psychic house and now here you are cuckoo for cocoa puffs out on the internet <laughs> <laughs> so let's kind of start let's pull way back that's my experience of you and that's why i wanted you to come on the podcast but let's start from the beginning who were you as a child were you a psychic kid what does your spiritual awakening look like tell us ah. Absolutely. As a child, definitely sensitive. I would watch commercials. You remember the commercials of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Mm -hmm. And as a two-year-old, just ball. Three-year-old, just ball. I'm getting, wow, chills just even talking about it. And I can always read the room. I didn't, and also, I always say that my, my readings come two ways. One from absolutely this gift that I don't know how it came, <laughs> but also uh, through life experiences and through trauma. Right. Mm -hmm. And learning how to read the room when I had to read the room, uh, but also having this gift. So learning them in two ways. Also, my parents are musicians and they had to read the room when performing to know what songs to pull. So there were so many different lessons. I just had life lessons to read. And I was always a channeler. I didn't know until I joined your class <laughs> that I was channeling. Mm -hmm. I would write and get messages. 
but absolutely. And I'm, I'm just going to say a quick plug. Thank you so much, Crystal. This is an absolute dream come true. Oh, thank you. Everyone, I've been watching Crystal for <laughs> years. <laughs> To be able to have this opportunity is literally a manifestation and an absolute dream come true. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. So, okay. You mentioned trauma. And so yeah. we probably have some of that in common and I've discussed at length around the world, um, just how trauma, I think actually a form informed my psychic ability. Like when you're living with an abusive person, and I'm not saying that was your experience because I haven't asked you yet, but when you're living with an abusive person or when you're in kind of acute trauma, you really do develop an extra sense. Like you send out the the net, you send out the forerunners, like what's dad gonna be like tonight when he comes home? And you really like check in intuitively and also in the field. And so I think actually my trauma and the abuse that I suffered has a lot to do with my psychic development. Now if you're comfortable do you want to touch upon kind of your trauma and how that might have affected your abilities sure and i am comfortable because we do have a success story uh but it it definitely was home life uh i had there was addiction in my home and abuse majority emotional abuse and absolutely having to every week or twice a week when those cycles would come reading okay what's what's about to happen what's going on this is familiar with me so the signs came you know it's I could smell it I can taste it in the air you know the, the hairs on my arms or the back of my neck would stand up and I know it was coming I will absolutely say today that I have a great relationship with my father. Uh, he is just amazing. And I'm just going to shoot another plug that December 12th, no, December 4th, 2022, he will have been clean for 10 years. Oh, wow. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yes, it is awesome. And it's amazing. That is a manifestation that I had as a child. And we do talk about it now and course hindsight but he he he's been through a lot uh however going through that I definitely it definitely opened up my ability to sense I guess that's the word sense mm -hmm. anybody ever tell you that you bring a lot of energy with you into a room <laughs> I'm just like, one of the ways that spirits and teams for other people show up for me is I start to get like this uptick in energy. And then I notice it and then I click in and I'm like, whoa, you're working with kind of a big team. Do you know that? And if so, who are these people? Who are, who's <laughs> with you right now? There's a lot going on. I do have a team and we are in commune all of the time. I absolutely bring them into not every situation, but a lot of situations because I need their help. I believe that we are a team and we switch places through time. I may be on the other side for one of them coming here or wherever they may end up in incarnation and, and vice versa. This is my theory of my team. They are a collective. I have the, I call them the watchers. They are also teachers. They bring messages. And the more, when I started to acknowledge them, the more information they would give. And it seems like, I think they've always been there, but the more that I do, I, I speak to them and we talk very frankly because they are extremely honest with me. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious. All right. What kind of beings are they? They are, I call them my divine, they're divine. Mm -hmm. So the watchers, the teachers are definitely uh, Pleiadian. They are extraterrestrial. I do have a spirit team 
that I believe my grandmother heads up because she comes through, mm -hmm. she pushes everyone out the way. Mm -hmm. Out of my, I have a message, no matter where I go, I'm speaking to psychics. I meet psychics on the street all the time. That's the, anyways, <laughs> and they, your grandmother's here. She's here, Ginny. And they give me the name. So yeah, it's a team. And, and there may be more. I think there may be more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just have to channel them in and, and get to know them and get their names and all that good stuff. Yeah, well, the thing about guides and <clears throat> in my experience is that you come into the incarnation with a host of guides anywhere from one to five to a million. I mean, people are different and we, we come here to do different things, but then they kind of also cycle in and out of the life as you are writing a book or as you're opening a business or as you're learning to cook, like you attract different guides at different times. So there's a lot of activity and movement, especially if you're a psychic person and you're in the intuitive arts. Um, I, I remember you talking a great deal in the circle not a great deal, but like when you would talk, you often mentioned ancestors, ancestor energy. And I wanted to have a conversation with you about that. Like, what is your perception of the ancestors and their presence in our current now incarnation and moment? Are they around? What do you think about the concept of something like ancestral healing or epigenetics, where we've got like patterns of energy passing down through generations current in our life? I know this is a lot. We'll, we'll parse it out. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I um, clued in on that when you mentioned it, and, and I also sensed ancestors around you. So what is your relationship with that? And how do you, how do you relate to the ancestors? Sure. So I relate through with my ancestors, first by watching one of your videos oh, to connect. Gosh. Absolutely. Oh connect with the ancestors. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yes, true, true story. And I had never, I thought about my ancestors, but never really got into the ritualistic part of it. So I followed your instruction in your video. And the first time I had contact was amazing. And I had three sets of ancestors come through. I am mixed with a whole bunch of stuff. But the three <laughs> groups that came through, I had Native Americans mm -hmm. and they were at the highest. I had my, and I'm, I'm going to say this exactly how they came through, these slave, black slave ancestors and they were about here. And then at a distance, I could barely see them were my European ancestors. And we started to chat. Why are you coming through this way? The natives, said, we are here with you. We've already been through the cycle. So now we're in integrated, integrated with nature, the trees, butterflies, flowers. Hence why I have my room <laughs> as a garden style. That's how we connect. And we've, we've, we were able to keep our spirituality and to keep the flow going. And that's where we are. However, and there's this one specific one and he has a chief, um, beautiful man. And I do believe he's like a fourth great grandfather. He is present always. The slaves started to talk to them. What's going on? And the message that I received, and I really feel this is, especially currently in our time, mm -hmm through your healing, we're healed as well. Because I asked, why are you still coming this way? Why are you still, I felt an oppression. I felt an energy, a dark energy. Because when we went through, when we came and incarnated and we continued through, it, nothing changed. There wasn't, that we weren't able to heal or able to see something else that was a, hmm. so the encouragement is keep going on your path. Keep, I'm getting chills on this side right now. <laughs> <laughs> keep going on your path, continue to heal because it will, of course, there's no time and space. So it will continue and continue that healing. 
my European ancestors were the furthest, said nothing. And it's almost like the process has to keep happening for the healing because I really would love for them to come forward. And I have questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have questions. However, you know, to, to come forward. Again, the message though was, it, there, there is a process that has to happen. Through this healing, they will be healed. And then they will be able to come forward. And so hopefully that answered the question a little bit for, for through my, oh my experience. Gosh. I think it's fascinating. And so the, the native energy is, is like prime and maybe the strongest and it's interesting how like you you categorize them like spatially around you and see them from afar off and maybe like the um european ancestors step forward when the life shifts and you're just you just become more ready for it maybe there's just things you need to do at the forefront to clear the energy and the path for that things are also more important at this time to work on i really believe in the idea that when we work on ourselves and when we become conscious to ancestral patterns and then intentionally go into them with our ancestors in our actual mind like in our mind's eye we're looking we're, we're seeing them we're envisioning them and as i heal and clear this and offer this and do my ho'oponopono and do all the things that i do ritualistically i am seeing them and doing this for them as well and i think when it when we do that it frees them up and you know in terms of uh, the, the slaves that you see that have this darker energy. Well, uh, let me ask you. So do you think that their entire souls are encapsulated in that? Or is this just a version of residual energy being offered to you while their souls have gone on to higher planes of existence? But this energy that they embodied while they were here is still here on the planet. And it is, right? So they're from a higher space space offering you this ancestral energy but it's not as if they're entrapped in slavery still do you think what do you think i do so i i think both okay there is a portion that is still here in the form though to assist not necessarily entrapped but I would not recognize them if I saw, you know, the, the right. freedom or the, the, the wings, the way that I can recognize it and, and to show me, and this was, of course, in my mind's eye, was to come as a slave, like your typical TV slave. Right. However in order for me to feel that oppressive energy or the dark energy, it may be, they may be here just a little bit in, in, in still there. Mm -hmm. However, however, through us and through, this is just me through, uh, uh, reincarnating and through us here going and going and passing through and and you know flying to wherever they decide <laughs> they so is what they offer a process that you as they're assisting you assist a transmutation but the ultimate goal is their full release or are they offering to assist simply to be present in the now? I hope I'm not going too deep on this, but I'm just so fascinated. Not at all. Mm -hmm. This is great. <laughs> I do believe through my healing or through our healing, there will be a full release. I do believe that sometimes spirits can hang on for dear life because they know nothing else. When I channel sometimes, 
I can see, for instance, I, I did a reading uh, the other day and I saw the gentleman in this woman's kitchen with her. And I, you know, did you cook for him or did he? She, Absolutely. I said, okay. That's his comfort because that's all he knows. So he's going to, he's sticking around. And I almost feel that way about the slaves that, and, and it's, it's, you know, and coming from a non-judgmental space of some just don't know anything else. So they're holding on to what they know. The light can be there. Their ancestors can be there. I'm there in a cosmic way, ushering them. Some, however, just cling, mm -hmm. cling to all that they know. Yeah. Hmm. So they're essentially earthbound somewhat kind of we can use the word trapped in the fourth dimension or whatever, but like they haven't crossed fully. They're still here and there may be a reason, but they might just be stuck because that's what they're habituated to. Yes. Interesting. You know, you're supposed to write a book. Do you know that? Yes. <laughs> I also see Oracle cards for you, like creating your own Oracle cards with messages. I do. I'm just going to tell you that as things come through, as I hear you talk, it's like your voice, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, the energy of the voice is like a thread that can connect and just it's through that channel of the voice, like all these things start coming through. Mm. Um, you mentioned that you have Pleiadian guides. Yes. How did they introduce themselves to you? And how did you know who they were? How did that work? From a child, I would always stare at the constellation and the moon as well. I would talk to the moon. Hey, I'm here and dream and just go. The first time that I consciously, I have to say that, had contact with the Pleiadians, I purposely put forth the effort. I sat in a black room and started calling on them and then not in meditation not with my third eye or third ear i heard as plain as day uh and i was in a closet something fell i ran out that closet so fast <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not and then i left it alone after that what started happening because then i asked okay you i i need you to come just a little gentler I am a scaredy cat. I am a little bit of a baby when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> so they did. And in the hypnogogic state, I started seeing flashes. Flashes. And of course, I open, nothing's there. So I learned, stay, look with this. Look with my third eye. These eyes can't see them. And I did. And then the fun began. What'd they look like? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> they, I had encounters with two, a fatherly type who gave me the message that he, <laughs> because I was asking, um, like, are you real? And he was a little shorter. Everything was telepathically, well, co communicated telepathically. The bodies were like static. Hmm. And the message that he said, because I asked, what is this? This is how we have to, so you can see us. This is how we manifest ourselves. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see. And every every message that he gave, every sentence, every word was just full of compassion. This, oh, my, my sweet child, or, oh, you're just, you're just so ignorant. You just don't know. Just wait. Um, <laughs> yeah. The other one was a bit taller, younger, and this, and I'm saying he, he, but the being was laughing at me. Like, Ha ha, you, you know, you big dummy. This is 
And <laughs> not Sanford and Son, you big dummy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so that was, and that that came. That was a gentle introduction. I also have been introduced doing mirror work. I do exercises where I light candles and I just stare in the mirror and see who appears, right? And I believe there's a word for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wait for you to say it. But... Scry scrying. <laughs> scrying, thank you. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but and I saw a a person and this was the first time and again I got scared but a man developed and he was Asian like that's the only way I could describe so beautiful big but Asian diamond eyes. shaped eyes oh, yeah okay mm -hmm. um bald with two or three um lines in the forehead um lighter like lighter I don't I don't lighter than me maybe like this complexion mm -hmm. and shoulders hunched but just full of love and he said I am you and you are me done candles blown out ran out the bathroom <laughs> i'm not doing this <laughs> because you know i i think sometimes yeah who's gonna believe this mm -hmm. this is did i see what i saw did i hear what i hear would i hear what i heard and so i i do first my first experience is with everything i do i run but i always come back that's the crazy in me i always come back <laughs> amazing wow i when you were pointing to the lines on the head i was like if she says she saw a symbol there and she did because i had an encounter very similar to that as well also with what appeared to be kind of a monkish kind of a person and he had a symbol right in the center of his head and we had an interesting conversation and and he also said that i was part of not a lineage but like a group that he was connected to and, and so not that I was him, but like that we were very connected. Mm. So interesting. Um, have you ever seen a ghost? Yeah. Yes. T tell us about it. I've seen so many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I will, one story hits home a little bit. And it was a friend who has passed on now. I was driving, we were both driving, but heading the opposite directions. And she, I don't know what had been happening. It was summer. Originally, I'm from Connecticut, so it gets a little warm. She was driving by and I had put my window down to yeah, scream out the window. And right beside her, as the chills come, I saw this being. And it was, it had black eyes that were droopy mm. and a mouth that was black and open wide. I was so scared and, and, and so, we're passing, but this is, you know, maybe it took five, seven seconds to pass, but this encounter to me was probably 10 minutes. As we were passing, I saw this and this thing went on to her. Again, that's one of my fear. I'm, I'm, and that was, I was, but young, probably 15 years ago, I would say this happened and I had to go home and I was crying, just crying because that was, it was an experience. However, I will, I, I, that's something I will never, ever, ever forget ever. What do you think happened? What do you think was going on with that? Yeah, that was the spirit of, or spirits of, or the energy of hopelessness 
Mm. Okay. Of, it, 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 it felt like all of the bottom level emotions wrapped up in one. Mm -hmm. And then what she was going through at the time, it made sense. It fit. So I, 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 that was, that was, that was an experience. Uh, so the question is, is the entity causing her emotions or is the emotions creating the entity? I believe that it is an absolute reciprocation. Mm -hmm. Symbiotic. Yes. It, 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 because it's almost they feed each other mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. if that okay yeah i i absolutely believe that it's like well chicken or egg but does it matter like at some point you've got a full-blown entity who's intelligent and parasitic and involved in your life and unless you get conscious to this and do what you can to clear that this is what we this is what we've got um you strike me as a ritualist. Maybe do you like rituals? Do you like to I do? I, so do you have let's talk about because again, I'm, I witnessed sort of your opening up and, and really starting to embody your gifts and talents. So do you have any disciplines or rituals, something that helped you to turn on all those little psychic lights in your life? And if so, what would those be? Sure. Well, I've been doing this professionally. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. you got to own um, that. Okay, you're right. You can't roll your eyes when you do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. I've been doing this professionally <laughs> for some time now. When I first started out, when and it through another psychic, <clears throat> excuse me, who was a pastor, great friend, she realized you got something, chick, <laughs> and that was probably fifth. 15, 20 years ago, somewhere around there. And from then I started to, one of my rituals that's extremely important to me is a bath and it is a spiritual bath every month. And that's the least amount. I try to every week, I shower though, however, <laughs> a spiritual <laughs> bath. Right. And I right, um, <laughs> get messages. I realized that it, when I was in these baths, people would appear right there. Also, at night, and this is with my daughter, she created a ritual <laughs> that has helped me. She is also intuitive. Uh, and at night, <clears throat> it is very simple, but we connect we lay together forehead to forehead and then we have the saying that she actually created now my child is 10 now but this was years ago and she is autistic so the saying is good night sweet dreams sleep tight i love you see you in the morning and we exchange that back and forth she will start and i echo she starts and just that i've noticed first for her to create a ritual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. however that centers me so much life can get hectic you know the, the times where I want to sit and meditate for hours I just don't have anymore so that little bit of time being spent in exchange and saying those and it's it's like it brings me back to ground zero of love that unconditional love i just i feel that that unconditional love which i'm still learning however it opens it just opens up so much and that lack of judgment you know i i and that's I, i'm scared of these ghosts when they come or i'm scared of this stuff because i'm judging them but <laughs> you know with with that love opening up all ceases judgment ceases and and messages come that's amazing and you say you do that at night before bed yeah. <clears throat> that's so good because when you when you create the vibration of that 
right before you drop off to sleep, you cue the universe or your subconscious or whatever you want to call the apparatus that manifests the stuff you want to do. Like you cue the universe to go ahead and start the process of manifestation. So we, when we fall to sleep in the vibration of this unconditional love that has just opened you up, I can see why you experience an acceleration in your gifts or an mm. opening up or like people are coming into the room or you're having more phenomena, you're having more evidences based on just a small ritual like that. And it also reminds me of the Ho'oponopono prayer, which is just four sentences, right? It's, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Mm. And that's been a game changer for me. Even if I don't have anyone that I should apologize for, I'm not in an active conflict with somebody, say, I can still kind of rise above and be an emissary for humans. And I can apologize to the ocean. I can apologize to the animals. I can apologize to different countries. I can rise above and do a ho'oponopono. But the thing is, the intention is just the love of it. Please forgive me. Let's have some compassion and thank you. Thank you. The gratitude also being so high vibration. I mean, she's, I don't know how old she was when she developed that, but it feels a lot like Ho'oponopono, which is sacred. Yes. And the first time I, I had heard about Ho'oponopono, Ho'oponopono, mm -hmm. I was living in the Dominican Republic talking about spiritual awakenings, right? <laughs> right. I was uh I had I was suicidal when that awakening happened and I had to leave I had to leave because I knew that if I were gonna if I was to stay in my surroundings I would not be here today so I went to the Dominican Republic lived there for a few years and I used to walk and just with the trees and have them communicate with me. However, she was, I don't even know if she was born, she was born around then, but I know that she wouldn't remember that. So for her to just come in, and of course it's simple, it's, it's just amazing. And I wonder, now I'm thinking, that energy that was coming through, because I would do this on a daily, it was a ritual, just take a walk and commune with, the, with nature if that energy, if she felt it, even, you know, prior to entering my body, entering the womb, mm -hmm. just something mm -hmm. to think about. <laughs> yeah, like you coded it into her. Yeah. 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 You know, you, you mentioned that your child has autism. Do you think that there are more autistic children on the planet now? And do you think that there's something spiritually special or relevant about autistic children from the vantage point of a mama? Yes and yes. <laughs> yes. The, the statistics are astronomical of autism coming in. My, yes, and I do believe that there is a, almost like a portal was opened. And these folks that came through from multiple places are here for a purpose that we, I, I, call, the, okay, I call them the troops. Okay. The troops who, and I, I you know, I observe her and the intuition is at a level and it's been that way since she was a, just a little baby she came out three pounds oh she was little. little 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 little, little. Mm -hmm. she's taller than me now <laughs> she's 10 and she's taller than me I mean I'm not that tall but little and and I would see her or we would see her <laughs> communicating mm -hmm. with whomever so now that she's older, that the mm, bridge or the, uh, I want it like a, 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 a tube mm -hmm. that is connecting her still to above, it's still there. 
she still remembers. And I see that with a lot of autistic kids. They still remember, mm -hmm. whereas maybe a non-autistic person, we start the forgetting. We start, you know, at mm -hmm. eight, nine, 10. Right. But it, it's still there. And I, I witness mm -hmm. this. So I encourage, we're going to remember, we're going to have conversation. I just, uh, for Christmas, got her her first, um, it's, it's a journal, but it's a spell journal, but spells for cleaning and for love and positivity. So I'm so excited to do that with her. <laughs> <laughs> However, yeah, I do. I do. And, and not just her, because of course she's in class with other autistic children and it, it's just, and I don't want to say, you know, generalize every autistic person because sure. it's not the case, but with a lot of them, it is, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it's, um, they're, they come, they're here, they come with something and I'm, I'm going to, okay. So I had the stone with me and this is how, this is just the visual that I'm getting. It's mm -hmm. like, they all have a stone, a diamond or a something powerful embedded in them and it just shines and they get information like this. I, I that's the only way I could explain it. <laughs> and that's, that's so wonderful because I mean, I don't know if you remember from the nineties and the early aughts, but we had like rainbow children, indigo children. Yes. We had, I think crystal children were a thing as well. <clears throat> and now we just have all of these very special children at a time where we really need them yes. <laughs> in Earth's history. I feel like, and you know, I always say that I feel like we've all chosen to come here now, activate and awaken our gifts, talents, and our perceptions, and in order to shift because it's so fluid. Like it can kind of go, not even in either way, it can go in a multitude of different ways. And so I think we've come in here to anchor it. And I do think that we have these special children who are helping us to grid it, anchor it, and amplify it. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, let's talk about the world for a second, Alexis. Um, I've been alive for a while, whatever. <laughs> but I mean, I've seen a lot, you know, I was born in the 60s. I was a kid in the 70s, um, saw the decadence of the 80s, the 90s were kind of a trip. Then, you know, nine, we've just been through a lot, even in just my lifetime with the cycles and the rhythm of different things and conflicts and things, but it just feels right now, especially with the threat of AI, the emergence of AI and tech, like never before in any other century have we had this kind of radical innovation and in technology. It just feels like we're at such an interesting precipice in human history. And with regard to technology, this can take us in so many different places even consciousness technology, spiritual technology. But then when you look like on social media and you see what people, normal people, the normies are actually talking about, the muggles, you know, when we're on social media, it's so divisive and toxic and tribalistic and mean. It does not reflect in any way the potential and the possibility that exists right now for humanity. So I wanted, I wanted to ask you, as a spiritual practitioner, really just as a spiritual person who's using your life for spirit, what do you make of this duality, this profound duality? And do you have any, of course, not global remedy, but do you have like any insights into how to keep your orientation on the divine living in such a intense, intense reality? And how do you stay oriented to this unconditional love that you're talking about, love for yourself and love for everyone? Sure, it's <clears throat> self-control. I don't, I am not a, hmm, hmm, let me choose my words carefully. I accept technology and there's absolutely a reason for it. Prior to running water in the house, they would have to go outside. Prior to us having a toilet in the house, they had outhouses. I remember visiting some family members in DC and, and there was a house outside the house. What is that? I, I, had, actually, an, I had an outhouse in Hawaii. 
yes, in the Dominican Republic, my mm-hmm. family there had a, a hole in the dirt, really was a hole in the ground. Uh, so the gratitude for that is, is, you know, and I don't take these things for granted, having lights in the house. And then we get to this place of exponentially mm-hmm. growing and it's personally <clears throat> I make sure that I always take the opportunity to get back to my original self which is just this this and connect with what else is original earth I am an earth sign as well, but earth, water, just that connection. And that brings me, that keeps me connected. And it's a conscious effort because it's really easy to get taken. I, and I, I could see it, you know, um, and even with myself, I do stay away from social media However, I started recently just checking, checking on some, you know, old friends. However, when I start reading the toxicity or the, ooh, some of this stuff, Mm -hmm. that's what I, it's my time to get off. Mm -hmm. It is my time to get off. So I, it's, I I have absolutely spoken with my team uh, regarding this AI or technology and where we're going. And, okay. Oh, please illuminate uh, us. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's a a more of a you're gonna have to go through this. This has to happen to get back to where it began. Okay. Well, I think one of my primary concerns, I wouldn't say it's a worry or an anxiety, is is the idea of transhumanism, which is, of course, uploading your consciousness to the cloud, right? And you live forever. You can live, I don't know, forever, but you can live for quite a long time. And I was actually talking to my brother about this, who is, he's he's a Christian, but he's a very spiritual person over Thanksgiving. And he's like, I'm down. (laughs) <laughs> like, I mean, he's like, I would love to just live forever and like have my consciousness uploaded. I'm like, but something about that feels really unholy to me. And I don't know why I, I don't mean to judge it, but it just feels so fundamentally wrong. But I do think that's kind of where we're going. And Elon Musk has actually said that it is inevitable in the next couple of decades that AI will merge with human biology. And of course, he's developing Neuralink, which is like an implant you put in your brain ball. So now I'm the Borg. Is that what I am? I'm like part of the Borg. I mean, I think I think that's where we're going. I think that's where we could go. Um, It's just such an interesting time to be alive. I honestly think from a soul level, we're just like, put me in there. I got to be there. It's wild and crazy down there. Yes, yes. And this is part of my uh, theory. The reason that they are doing this is to keep folks here. My question, though, is can you really keep a soul here? You know, okay, it'll be in the likeness of maybe my personality, my voice, my emotions, but, but my actual spirit. I don't think so. I want to fly. I want to get recupped or refilled, my cup refilled. And I've said this and I will say it now. I know I came here for a purpose. I chose to come here in this moment. I will choose again to come back for the greater good. If this is what it takes, that is my my pledge to my people, the Pleiadians. Well, you're a greater <laughs> uh, being than I, because that's after this oh. life, I'm like, I need a break, man. <laughs> Send me to a lovely galaxy or dimension where everybody's happy, just for a little right. while at least. I can't take it. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. Well, so okay, so that's interesting. So in the 
discussions you're having with your team, they're saying that the AI is actually the facilitator for us to return to our natural origins. Does that mean like be blasted back to the stone age? Or does that mean developing a sense of, because I mean, that's on deck, right? There's this fear of like what, what we could do to ourselves. Or is it just developing a sensibility of what it means to be human again? It, I don't, what do they say? Right. Well, both. So the question I had the other day, so I, I will go into deep, deep thought and ask these questions. And the question was, what if this is a repeat? Right. So we're always cyclical, cyclical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what if, because they are also bringing back dinosaurs, right? They just created a dinosaur. With I a, know. Right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So what if this, we've already been here. Of course, we don't know because that history is erased and they brought back dinosaurs. Now the dinosaurs grow, destroy us all. Now they're here. Now an asteroid comes, boom. Now we're at the stone age again. You know, this, mm -hmm. this cycle that keeps happening with earth. That was one of my questions. I, they, the way that I receive it from them is getting back to the human part of it. Now the next question, well, what does that mean? Does it mean stone age? Does it mean we have to destroy ourselves? Does it mean that Elon Musk and his crew are now in space and a thousand years from now, 10,000 years from now, generations down the line, are they coming back? Are they giving us messages like, hey, y'all need to get it together mm -hmm. because we've been there. We've gone through this and this is what happens. All of these, these. <laughs> well, some, some say that that's who the greys are, the little greys from like Whitley Streeper's communion, that they're actually us in the future coming back to try to procreate with us. We have these hybrid alien theories because they have lost the ability to do so. But of course, that's just, you know, that's just, I feel like people get a little crazy with the sci-fi and the ideas, but maybe, who am I to say maybe? Now, I promised you, I'd get you out of here in an hour. So I just have one more question for you. Yes. <laughs> I just, you're here. You've got to come back though. And we're like, we'll take one topic and then we're just going to go nuts with it. Oh, but I, I usually ask my intuitive uh, folks what they see for 2023 or like whenever you're watching or listening to this what they see for the year or two coming and i know i didn't give you that ahead of time and but you've probably been asking it sounds like you're having a lot of questions what do you feel intuitively is coming for us next year i, I should rephrase that it's going to manifest in joy for us in the next year manifest in joy that's a great question because i see the the human race I see us which we already are on that path of coming together on this path though there are you know rocks bumps branches sticking out that we get scratched up and beat up and bruised and uh, there has to be sacrificial folks and I am thankful for them for you know what what has happened and I just see that and I, I know this is supposed to be in joy no, but that's I do okay see, okay <laughs> I do see, okay yes honestly I see that continuing and I see it getting worse. Okay. However, with that, this separation of earth is happening. And it's on an energetic level, like a spiritual level of with all of this negativity happening, right? It's, it's growing so that you have the believers and the non-believers, the believers of, well, because of this, we we have a new earth or we can develop a new space we can develop a new love we can grow together then you have the non-believers of oh this is horrible this place is horrible send me back send me away lord get me out of here 
So I think that separation is just going to keep growing. I am on the, I absolutely, yeah, stuff, it hurts, it hurts. Oh, as being an empath, <laughs> as you know, you know, mm -hmm. this, you could just feel it everywhere. However, with that negative feeling also comes with this beautiful energy of love and that, you know, it's going to be okay. Things will absolutely get better. We have to go through this though. Just like that, we are going to have to go through this to see it through. And hence we are here. <laughs> Very lovely. The way that you phrase that. I see the same thing. I feel like things, I mean, if you want to say get worse before they get better, you know, we're going through labor pains. Actually, that's how Jesus phrased it labor pains and then yes. comes the new creation and so we're in labor for a little while longer i was like how much longer though this is a lot <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, I really feel like it's um five years maybe it's five yeah. years Th this decade is, is not going to be the greatest in in history <clears throat> if there's an opening up and i think there will be i think it's going to be around the end of this decade in the early 30s we're going to have like some new things coming in and some fresh energy but i mean that's just I feel like that's a lot, but that's okay. And you're right, truly all is well. And I think it's an invitation. It's always an invitation to go back inward because that's where the mm. peace is mm. that surpasses all understanding. Meaning I should be really upset about this world, but I'm at peace. I don't know why, but that's what it is. And that's, I think that's the inspiration through the storm. Mm. Well, Alexis, I have to tell you, first of all, I love you. I think I very, I think very highly of you. I think, um, and I, you know, when I was watching you and I was telling Steph to reach out to you and like, like, let's get her in the lab, like, let's get her involved in things because, um, I want, I wanted to support whatever it is that was growing in you. Um, I think you are very talented, What I like about the intuitive services, if you want to call it that, that seems kind of clinical, the in, intuitive ministry that you do is that it's all about the heart and you're lifting people up and you're you're loving people through it and you're connecting with them on such a deep level because i've seen you you know just give your free readings in the light shine lab and by the way if you're not a member you should be a member and you should come watch and get some free readings but just the way that you touch people doing what you're doing is amazing to me so i would love to just have my listeners and my viewers find out more about you or connect with you or like start getting some of this ministry in their lives. How can a person find you to book a reading with you? Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. That means so much to me. I mean so it. very much. Thank you. You're a rock star. Oh They're gosh. Good. Crystal's a rock star to you me. You know, I can sing, so don't let me I'm, sing. <laughs> and I just want to say for you being born in the sixties, honey. Well, I'm trying, yes. I'm figuring it out with that vibration. Better swing that <laughs> hair, girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, right now I, I have COVID came and I whoop, went into my little cocoon, but I am spreading back out right now. You can uh, send me a direct email at Alexis K Mathis at gmail.com. I am on Facebook as well as Alexis K Mathis, even though it has been a while. And that is it. Hopefully, not hopefully, definitely in the soon future. This is actually going to be my coming out video to the public because <laughs> oh, no. so many don't know about this. Okay. I have oh, kept it. I have clients, but it's very, mm -hmm. it's a very small group. But yes, I am excited. Um, but yeah, how I, I, I love that. Mm-hmm. So every other Thursday, I am on the Light Shine Lab at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. So it's not there. Okay, this Thursday just passed, which was yesterday. So next Thursday, I mm -hmm. will be on Catch Me and bring your your hydration choice. <laughs> well, I love that you're keeping it um, old school with just reach out by email. 
connect with you by email. So alexiskmathis at gmail.com, link in the description of this video and of the pod as well, and find you on Facebook as well. But it's probably just better to just reach out and write to you. And I love that you are declaring your expansive ministry, your expansive profession. Right? Profession. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we need more people shining their light. Don't hide it under a bushel. Don't do it. You got to let the people know. And so here now they know. Yes, they know. They <laughs> so, do. Thank you so much for coming on the pod. I really do want you to come back sometime in the near future. Um, and I've just enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much, Alexis. I did too. Thank you, Crystal, so very much. A dream come true. Oh, Absolute dream come true. You're so sweet. I love you. Seriously. <laughs>